In today's video, I'll show you how I made this Christmas tree from old whiskey or wine barrel staves and a whiskey bottle. Check it out. The key to a project like this is planning. So the first thing I did was figure out what was the shape I wanted for my tree. I had to think about what were my knowns and my main known was I couldn't be more than 36 inches tall and I wanted to be around 26 inches wide. So I used the 26 inches wide with a decrease of 25% on each vertical stave and that's how I came up with the shape of the triangle for my tree. Now I had no idea how many staves I was going to need but what I did know is that I had my width and that calculated to my height by using a 25% reduction on each vertical stave. So I drew it out using a 2x2 two two inch grid on this grid paper and again reducing my number 25 percent as i went up and that gave me my stave lengths 26 24 22 inches 21 inches all the way up to the very top of the tree now i did realize uh the top one was going to be worthless so i cut that one out and here are the staves that i'm using as you can see here the staves actually get narrower as they get to the end you know here's very little overlap but then whenever i show it here in the middle there's quite a substantial amount of overlap because of this i knew i wanted to cut from the middle out instead of just chopping off one end or the other. I wanted to make sure I used the middle of each stave. In addition to this narrowing that happens as it tapers, the staves also had some curvature dead center compared to the end where they were pretty flat. And I'll show you that here. And then also the stave itself had a natural curve to it. And I knew if I just used one end or the other, I was gonna end up with a lopsided effect on my tree. So I decided everyone had to be dead center and I was gonna cut the ends off each side. The next thing I had to decide is which direction my staves were going to go. I originally planned on having them curved down. I figured that was most tree-like, as you can see in this photo here. But after I assembled it, I decided to take a chance and just see what it looked like the other way. And I actually liked it much better with the staves curved up. So that's what I end up going with in the end. Before I put any time into building it, I had two other things I had to figure out. Did I want a tree where the staves went 360 degrees around, or did I want to have it where it could go flat up against the wall and the limbs all came out in 180 degrees? So I made two sample trees here using popsicle sticks and coffee stirs. After looking at them, I thought for sure I was going to go with the 180 degree look, but I really like the symmetry of the 360 degree tree. The one here on the right, so that's the one I decided to build. Now, I knew I was gonna use a whiskey bottle for the base of my tree, so I wanted to tap and thread the top of the whiskey bottle, and that way I'd get something for my threaded rod to sit in and hopefully add some rigidity so that it didn't lean one way or the other once it was in the bottle. So I basically just uh, drilled a hole in the middle of it and then put some threads in the wooden part of the whiskey top. Uh, I did go all the way through, through the cork, but the cork obviously didn't add much support. I cannot believe how long it took to twist this cork back onto the threaded rod. In addition to the cork, I also had a rubber foot that I was gonna put on the bottom of the pole. And I use these glass whiskey color rocks inside the bottle. You can see here, I actually have another bottle in the background. That was my original plan, but the little rocks didn't fit very well through the neck of the bottle. So I pulled an audible, went to this other whiskey bottle and it ended up working out great. Now here I am, this took so long to screw this cap on, but I basically just got it close and then I put it back onto the whiskey bottle and did some fine tuning. My goal being that that rubber foot would rest against the bottom of the bottle and give some tension to prevent the threaded rod from leaning one way or the other. Now onto these staves, not only had they been sitting in my shop for a while, I did get some donated from a guy who makes furniture out of whiskey staves, but they had a lot of dirt, gunk, char uh, from their process. So the first step was to clean them off. I started off using this brush, it was a tire brush, but I ended up going to this glue scraper that I got from the box store and it did a great job of taking off the bulk char. I did want to leave that nice black color, I just didn't want soot getting all over my hands and all over everything else as I was working with it. After I got them cleaned, I hit them with just a few coats of rattle can poly. The idea being that it would just kind of seal in that black residue, stop it from getting all over everything as I continued to work with these staves. 
Now, I knew I needed 16 staves, and you'll see here I have less than 16 out. But my thought was that once I got higher up on the tree, the lengths were gonna be so short that that curvature I talked about earlier wasn't really gonna matter. So I was hoping that as I moved to the shorter lengths, the nines, the sevens, the six inch boards, I'd be able to use the off cuts from those to go ahead and finish the four and a halfs, the twos, etc. I got all the staves lined up. I tried to go thinnest at the top, thickest at the bottom, and then I just marked them off. I got a line down the center, because again, remember, I want it to go dead center uh, to try to get a nice uniform shape. And then uh, as I got them fine-tuned, I drew a line down the middle. And then one neat thing about having my book with all my numbers in it was that half number that I got from my two-inch grid. I just knew I needed to go that far from center. So 13 one way, 13 the other. 12 one way, 12 the other. And I just marked all the staves all the way up and got them ready for the saw. You'll see here I'm marking with a white chalk pencil. These things work really good on any dark wood like your walnuts or in this case, charred oak barrels. Um, it leaves a really easy to see line and it's easy to clean off. I will say, make sure you clean it off if you're gonna put any kind of finish on top because the chalk does kind of prevent uh, oil or, or mineral spirits from soaking into the wood. But besides that, it's been a great tool and resource in my shop. Now, I wanted to mimic the angle of these whiskey staves, as you can see on the end. So I cut every one at a 45. Um, every end that I cut was at a 45, and I did this, and it gave it a real nice uniform climb as it went up the tree. I really think if I would have just cut these straight down at a 90, it would have looked bulky and would have really taken away from the beauty of the angle, the triangle shape of this tree. I have one inch spacers between the barrel staves and I could have done this a few ways but I had this walnut dowel rod from a previous project and it worked really well I just cut one inch pieces of the one inch dowel rod and these were going to be my spacers I will say be careful anytime you're using a stop block and a spinning blade to cut something I did have a few fly up due to the tension but I got all that I needed cut I got them sanded to where they were all flat and flush and then I made a simple jig to where I could make repeatable holes with the drill press there's nothing fancy about this jig. All it was was a piece of wood I already had with a notch cut in it, but it made a seat for these round pieces to sit in, and I came through and got a center hole in every one of these dowel spacers. Um, whenever I work on projects like this, I kind of skate the line between having a clean shop and leaving tools set up. I knew I was gonna use this drill press with this drill bit to not only cut the holes in these, but as well as cut them in the staves. So I left everything as it was until I knew I was gonna be done. Uh, I did clean up a little bit of the sawdust, but I had to come back a few times and actually recut uh, one of these spacers because one of the holes wasn't exactly where I needed it to be. I want to give a shout out to my buddy Ben Neiman at Make for Life Workshop. I polished all these spacers up with some of his wood balm. He uses this for cutting boards, but he did a great job on these walnut spacers. Then here I am just repeating those holes again on the wooden staves. Um, I had the line already marked and then I marked dead center using a tape measure and a straight edge. Uh, and then I just eyeballed it. I mean, in the end, it didn't have to be perfect because they weren't going to line up exactly on top of one another. But I went ahead and cut all these and then I assembled to see how it came out. Now, if you recall from earlier, I did put the tree together the way that I had originally attended. Uh, but then after looking at it, I decided I wanted to try it again with the staves flipped upwards. And so here you see me putting them on where they curve down. But on the next shot, you'll see the staves are actually facing the other way. I just didn't record that thought process. And so here we went, final assembly. I just slid them all one on top of each other. I started with the stave since I already had the cork. I didn't feel like I needed another spacer. And then just went stave, spacer, stave, spacer, stave, spacer, till I got to the top of the tree. I put lights on it and I was done. But I wasn't done. Because the more I looked at the lights, I just did not like what they did to the, the stave tree. I felt like the lights took away from it. I'm a big colored light Christmas guy but in this case the green rope and then the disorganized nature of the lights just made it like a jumbled mess and it took away anything that the staves added now what I did have was some other light options I had these battery powered lights they're much shorter but if they looked better I could probably string two or three together on the same battery pack and see how they worked out so first step take all the lights off I didn't want to force this project and keep these old lights on Take all these off and then go ahead and put on this battery powered set of lights. And I knew for a fact that one set wasn't going to be long enough, but I thought two might get the job done. So the first thing I did was cut the battery pack off of them and then wire these together to one battery pack. 
I wanted to make sure that they worked before I went ahead and tightened everything up. So I just went ahead and did a quick test. They worked, took them apart, heat shrinked around the exposed ends, and then I went ahead and wired the tree. Now remember, my only problem was not the colored lights or the size of the wires, but it also just looked like a jumbled mess. So after giving it a go, I realized this also looked like a jumbled mess. And so I decided to put some copper nails on the back side. This would give me some good anchor points to make sure that I had a good distribution of the lights. I didn't end up with just big bird nest areas. And I really liked these little copper nails. I thought they added something to it. They really fit with the motif. And with the copper wires from the fairy lights, they really blended in well. And so here it is, the second set of lights. And I didn't like these either. Uh, they definitely weren't in the way, and from one side they looked good, but the problem was the battery pack just didn't put out enough power, and from the other side of the stave, you just didn't get any kind of effect. I thought you might get a reflection or something, but one side was bright and one side was dark, and it just wasn't what I wanted. So in the end, I wasn't happy with the colored lights. I came back, this is 66 feet of clear lights, the big difference is this has the copper wire like the fairy lights have, where the other original lights had that heavy green cord. Uh, the secondary string, I did like that it was on a battery pack, but I'd have to be changing batteries all the time. This plugs into a USB outlet. I might change the batteries later, but uh, I do like the thin wire with the white lights. It's got several different uh, twinkle modes. It actually has a remote right here um, that I'll have to set up. Let's see what this does. Yeah, so it's got different modes with this remote. And um, in the end, I'm really happy with how the tree came out. I can't wait to start putting some ornaments on it. And I've got a few other things I wanna do before the holiday season gets here. Thanks for watching. The onus for making this tree, especially before Thanksgiving or even Halloween was here, was because I'm doing a maker toy drive where makers send me in a Christmas ornament and in turn I buy a toy for Toys for Tots. You can see here I've got a nice collection already going. When I get into December, I'm going to do another video where I highlight each of these ornaments, tell you about the maker who sent them in, and give you links to all their pages.